This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News, see how students in the FM area are helping to stop starvation. Watch how NDSU students are painting into the weekend. And in Campus News Sports, see how one MSUM diver is diving back in after a missed chance last year. Plus, how students and schools have endured one of the worst winters in years. Good morning and welcome to the first campus news show of 2019. I'm Shannon Blumgren. And I'm Tanner Robinson. For weeks, brutally cold temperatures have sent colleges and universities across the U.S. into a deep freeze. Many schools, including Minnesota State University Moorhead, have had to call off classes for multiple days. I talked with professors and students on campus to see if these snow days have left them feeling out in the cold. Since the start of spring semester, MSUM has closed campus three times and has had multiple late starts. This, uh, Jason Anderson, a communications professor on campus, is there. just one of many teachers trying to stay on track with the required curriculum. Remember, but it does cause problems for students. You know, in 2019, our students are awfully busy. A lot of them have, if not full time, very demanding jobs off campus and they make schedules ahead of time and they they count on due dates being when the when they are uh, they plan ahead with the help of technology it is easier to take the classroom home sometimes it is unsafe to even go outside let alone drive now students can remain at home during a polar vortex and stay warm and safe during these frigid days. In my mind, it almost works better online because everybody's engaged actively in the talk. Um, so there's lots of things you can do uh, without having to be physically present. Most students would agree that it was nice to sleep in and catch up on other assignments. This was not the case in some areas of study. Kara Bruce Finnis is a commercial music major on campus. And when campus closes, it creates a different type of dilemma. No, I think the most negative thing is when the campus closes the Center for the Arts building, like if they like deny card access, because then I can't get in there and practice, and I gotta take all my supplies and lug it up to my um, dorm room. The polar vortex is over, and even though winter seems to be just hanging around, students are happy to be back in the classroom. This is the first time since 2009 that MSUM has had more than two school closures during the entire school year. And universities in the Fargo-Moorhead area are already prepared for more bad weather days thanks to some cross-college cooperation. MSUM and M-State are alerted by, about severe weather by North Dakota's chief climatologist at NDSU. The colleges have a conference call with public schools in Fargo and West Fargo to go over the latest forecast. Snowfall totals, temperature, and wind speeds are all taken into account when deciding whether or not to call off class. So far, MSUM has closed for five days this winter, twice in December during the holiday break, twice in January, and once in February. Vice President of Finance and Administration Gene Holler says this, this many closures in one semester happens once in a decade. I would say it's, it's pretty unprecedented other than what we experienced during the winter of 1996-97 when we had well over 100 inches of snow, um, as well as the floods of 2009. Holler says more closures are always possible so long as classes meet for at least two-thirds of the semester, meaning MSUM could have up to 20 more closures this year if the weather takes a turn for the worse. Those snow days won't be vacation days for many employees at colleges in the Red River Valley. Over three feet of snow has fallen in parts of the Fargo-Moorhead area. It's caused trouble for the MSU grounds crew. With people stuck inside, cars were covered in inches of snow and temperatures dropped below freezing. The weather made clearing the lots difficult and caused problems for parking. Especially the cold temperatures, we've had a lot of vehicles that uh, were unable to start, so they needed to get their cars uh, jump-started. So our officers have been extremely busy jump-starting cars uh, on, a, on a daily basis since then. And also with the snow, you know, the snow piles in those spots, and if those cars don't move, it's really hard for the grounds crew here at MSUM to really do, um, to clean out those spots. 
The school hopes to keep the parking lots cleaned up, cleared up as the weather continues to improve. Bad roads and mounds of snow don't stop, didn't stop MSUM Public Safety from doing its job. Reporter Anthony Fridgen caught up with one officer who braved the cold while students stayed bundled up inside. Yowza. <laughs> it's ridiculously cold. I'm from Minnesota. It takes me a little bit into the uh, winter before I actually get used to it, it seems like. I have been here since 2004. I was the first permanent uh, full-time staff member in patrol. Well, today, not having any school, um, our days are just responding to any calls that come in. Um, but then we're not enforcing parking um, for permits and things like that or meters. So we patrol campus because um, even even when the campus is closed, we're still driving around, make sure everybody's safe, make sure nobody's out walking and you know having any medical issues or succumbing to the cold. Um, like I said, we've done four jump starts already today and one car unlock. And then, you know, like half hour earlier, somebody had their, their hoods open, they're trying to jump start their own car. But you know, just look around campus, I mean, still quite a few cars on campus, so well, people are staying here for the two days that were closed, um, but they're all uh, staying indoors. I'm assuming they're all catching up on homework, they're all sleeping in. Uh, they're probably making quick trips over to Kesey for food, but other than that, you know, they're all doing things on their floor and hopefully just staying inside. Public safety responded to over 100 jumpstart calls around campus in the last three days of January alone. The three-week teacher strike at Wright State in Ohio is now over. Students are now back in class after the University Board of Trustees voted to approve a university-wide health care plan for faculty. The new deal will run through June 30th, 2023. Faculty union members will also receive a 2.5% raise in both 2022 and 2023 as part of the agreement. At one point, the university was advertising for every job at the university to any candidate willing to immediately relocate and teach at the university. Students at NDSU are voicing their concerns over a House bill that will make voting easier for students. The bill was shot down on the House floor. House Bill 1479 would have allowed students at North Dakota colleges to use their student IDs to vote in the primary and general elections on the state and national level. Some students we talk to say they feel without the bill, voting in the next election will become more difficult because the current voter ID laws are challenging for students. It was just confusing uh, a lot. The, the website really was, um, it did say different things, it was vague in a lot of the things where uh, when, it, when there's a tight election, like in 2018 here, it, it really did matter um, when people don't know how to vote. The North Dakota legislature is currently offering no alternative voting options for students. Students at a California college are having a difficult time hiding their grades from their parents. Over 4,000 students at Cal Poly Pomona saw their active student records accidentally posted through email and on the popular website Reddit. An administrator in the computer science program made the mistake in late January. While nothing incredibly sensitive was published to the internet like social security numbers, the mistake did put the students' academic standing on display. Cal Poly was able to take down the email within an hour of its sending. The university is taking a hard look at its email policies. As the spring semester kicks in for schools around the area, students at MSUM may be starting to see fewer faces around campus. According to the school's enrollment database, the school has lost nearly 500 total traditional undergrad students since 2015. The loss is a part of a regional trend across the Midwest. The university hopes to increase enrollment through its graduate and online programs offered at the school. A group of Marquette business students in Wisconsin is joining forces to help the mental health of their fellow students. The four students created the Confidence Box. It's a care package filled with self-care items to help motivate students and manage their stress. Each of the items is hand-picked by the students and changes with each box. 
Some of the past products included things like a journal and pen, hand warmers, tea, and a worry stone. For now, each box is made and purchased one at a time, but the students are planning on making it a monthly subscription. Each box costs $25. Millions of children around the world don't get enough food every day. But one global organization is trying its best to reduce that number. I went inside Shields Arena in Fargo to see how volunteers are chipping in to help stop starvation. Volunteers across the FM area flock to Shields Arena in Fargo to make food packages for the Feed My Starving Children organization. As many as 1,200 people, including college students, donned their hairnets and packed some boxes of rice. And these people were hard at work, sending the smells of each ingredient into the Shields Arena air. Among the group is Concordia College senior Kaya Ruff, who's helped with this organization before. I grew up in the Twin Cities and it's really big there, so they have a lot of different packing places um, in warehouses throughout the city, so I've been there. Um, a lot growing up, but this is my first time doing it around this area. The volunteers worked at different stations where they scooped, dumped, and boxed the food. Ruff and a group of over 50 students from Concordia kept the pace throughout the day, and she says they enjoyed the experience. It's been great. Um, we have a lot of people who have never packed with Feed My Star Starving Children before. Um, so it's really cool that they get to experience this for the first time with um, a really good group of people. Event organizers at Shields Arena say they are happy with the number of volunteers for this event, especially the number of students. It's amazing, amazing difference it's making in their lives knowing that we have every university in the Fargo-Moorhead area as well as countless high schools and middle schools coming, learning about helping others, taking time out of their busy schedules to really make a difference around the world. You can take two million meals! In the end, millions of meals were prepared for children all around the world, and everyone who was there did their part, one grain at a time. The event's goal was to pack two and a half million meals. Volunteers achieved that goal over all three days of the event. Students in Alabama are earning an associate's degree before they even get their high school diploma. The Center for Advanced Academics and Accelerated Learning is giving students the chance to learn workforce skills. This center uses virtual reality technology and flight simu simulators to teach students problem solving, collaboration, and communication. This program was designed to give students a foundation to help them in the real world. It gets them out of the classroom and into a creative class environment, focus, focusing on hands-on work. The center is funded by the local school system and is free to students. Several recent scientific studies show honeybees are slowly becoming extinct but one NDSU professor and her lab team are setting out to save these insects through a big project. Dr. Julia Bauscher has studied bees since coming to North Dakota a few years ago. The National Science Foundation recently gave her a nearly $3 million grant to carry out this research. She's relied on the help of undergraduate and graduate students, including junior Claire Campion. Campion says because she's done this research for a couple of years, she, has a now, she now has a better understanding of how bees function within nature. I've grown a lot. I would be very nervous going out into the field, but now I have more confidence and it's been a really good experience. Bauscher's team will start its field research again this summer. A group of Nebraska Methodist College students is getting some help from a new piece of technology. The students in the cardiovascular sonography program are using an anatomage table to help with their studies. It replaces the need for human cadavers. The new table has four 3D models of actual donated cadavers preloaded into it for students to pick from. The 3D models can be dissected and explored by the students in a hands-on way. The anatomage table was donated to the school by a longtime employee. In the basement of Langseth Hall at MSUM, Something fishy is going on, but not in a strange way. MSUM's Marine Ecology Lab recently invited people in for an open house. The lab has a wide variety of sea creatures like fish, stingrays, and crabs. 
In total, the lab holds 14 different species of animals from all over the world. Marine Ecology Club President Savannah Hohenstein says events like these provide a great deal of exposure for the lab. Not a lot of people know that the Marine Lab even exists on campus, so having open houses like this um, is really helpful for us to get the word out um, so that people know that it's down here. Hohenstein also says she plans to help with more open houses in the near future. The popularity of the crafty social media site Pinterest has now found its way onto college campuses. As reporter Alex Larson tells us, students at NDSU let the creativity flow. The line was out the door as NDSU prepared for a night of food, crafts, and fun. President of Campus Attractions Danny Gertz says it's been a hit and that there's something for everyone. This night in particular, we started it out as a Pinterest night in general, and we started doing, um, like creating uh, mason jars, decorating mason jars. We, we, did had, we had a couple of different things that students could do. So it was like mason jars, canvases, and like one other craft. And we noticed students really liked the canvases. So that kind of evolved into just doing canvases and that kind of evolved into canvas night, which is what's going on now. This night gives students a free alternative option to be creative and be with friends. Kaylin Brown took full advantage of this opportunity. I came here because I've always wanted to do something like art as you like it, but they're so expensive and like you have to pay a lot of money to go. So when I heard about this, I thought it was a great opportunity to hang out with some of my friends and do some painting for free. Along with the chance to do free crafts, there are also contests held through Snapchat. We recently started doing Snapchat contests. So we have students send our campus attraction Snapchat pictures of the canvases that they make and then we pick winners. Danny says that with over 300 in attendance that they will be holding more of these nights in the future and students will definitely be back. I'm having a lot of fun. I messed up my painting a little bit so that was a little bit of a downer but I'll definitely be back if they do anything, another painting thing or anything like this. I'll definitely be back. With photographers Zach Thompson and Carrie Hoverson, Alex Larson, Campus News. With the large turnout, NDSU hopes to host another Pinterest Canvas event in the future. And now we turn it over to Jacob Tenson for a look at this week's sports. So Jake, it looks like the Bison are getting some national attention in football again, but this time off the field. You're absolutely right, Tanner, except for this time, NDSU has a big trip in the works. <clears throat> the NDSU Bison football team is making national headlines again after being invited to the White House. President Trump invited the team after a conversation with North Dakota Senator John Hoven about their success. The team has won seven of the last eight FCS championships. NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson says being invited to the White House is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and he's excited for the experience. Former head coach Chris Kleiman, who led the team to the championship, was also invited. NDSU staff are talking with White House officials to figure out the details of the trip. North Dakota State University Athletics are making an effort to level the playing field for girls in the world of sports. Reporter Griffin Nelson went to a special event where they're doing just that. It's always important to lift each other up. There we go! At the second NDSU Girls and Women's in Sports Day, grade school girls were able to get hands-on help from Bison student athletes. Event goers hit different sports stations, including soccer, track and field, football, and even nutrition, complete with a popsicle. NDSU marketing grad assistant Ariana Karski was part of last year's inaugural clinic. We had a crazy turnout last year um, and we just were like it's something that we felt would be a great addition to add every single year. The event's second year offered a new series of experiences for the girls participating, an opportunity to become part of the Bison's in-game atmosphere. They could cheer, ball out at halftime, or hear their voice on the loudspeakers. So this year we wanted to find a sponsor, someone who would maybe give something to the participants when they come, and it worked out that Midco was able to do it. Megan Morrissey, a student at Kennedy Elementary, spent the first half of the women's basketball game shadowing a professional sports broadcaster. At halftime, Megan Morrissey stepped away from the monitors to answer some questions for the local media. Today, a bunch of girls were able to go around and do sports and do things that they sometimes that they can't do because they don't have the equipment. Whether it be courtside or on the field of play, NDSU is certain 
there's a spot on the roster for everyone. For all these young girls to come here and have the opportunity to see our student athletes and to see the different departments that go into being what a student athlete is, I think it's super important for young girls to see that. With photographer Damian O'Donnell, Griffin Nelson, Campus News Sports. Midco gave hats and free tickets to the women's basketball game against DU out to every participant. While most students spent their recent snow days in bed, not everyone got a chance to sleep in. Athletes at MSUM still had to make their way to Nemzik Fieldhouse for practice. Athletic Director Doug Peters says most students wanted to come in to train even when the weather turns bad, but added finding a time where everyone can come to practice is a challenge. It's a group text to all of the coaches and just tell them to hang tight and then having one-on-one -on -one conversations with each of the coaches to make sure the time I think is, is going to work is going to work for them and so that we maximize the space that we have and it's not sitting empty for an hour and then just pushes our day an hour longer. Peter says the most important part of the snow day practice is the safety of students. After success at the D2 level, Augustana is ready to take its sports to the next level. Augustana is currently in the Northern Sun Con Intercollegiate Conference and plans to tell the conference if they are leaving by the end of the year. The school plans to find a D1 conference by the 2021 school year. The NCAA says a school cannot begin the process until they are accepted into a different conference. Augustana has won D2 national championships in men's basketball, baseball, and women's cross country. The North Dakota State University baseball team kicks off their season by getting to meet fans of all ages. The Meet the Team event is a yearly event to kick off the baseball season. This event lets fans of all ages to get autographs from the players and coaches. It's giving back to the community, trying to uh get the community to recognize our baseball team to come out and see us play. Our kids work really hard. They're dedicated in the classroom, out on the field, and all of their endeavors in the community. And it's good to give back and give an opportunity to get kids excited about baseball as spring rolls around. The Bison started their season February 15th in Sacramento. After missing nationals by less than a point, one MCUM senior returns to the diving board, aiming to start where she finished last season. Reporter Nick Knapper dives us into the pool. Imagine being so close to something, but falling just short of the goal. MSUM senior Amber Westring splashed just short of making it to Nationals last season. What happened was I ended up making it, but then I didn't because they messed up the score. So I was excited. It went from excited to not so excited. Um, I was happy that I got a PR, but it was a little bit um, disappointing that I missed it by so little. Westering isn't letting last season drown her hopes for this season. It just made me work harder. I was like, I was so close that time that I was like, I know I can make it. So it just kind of gave me a little extra push. Westering has some big plans in mind to finish her senior season. My ultimate goal was qualifying for nationals, which I reached. And now the goal is to go to nationals and hopefully get top 16 or somewhere around there. As she winds down into her last dive, she embraces the thrill of why she started in the first place. My favorite part about diving is probably the adrenaline rush. You, you know when you hit a dive and it just kind of gives you that little bit of confidence and the adrenaline rush really gets you going and it's really exciting. Westering has been named NSIC Athlete of the Week three times in her final season. With photographer Jacob Tenson, I'm Nick Knapper, Campus News Sports. The Dragons will compete in the finals of the NSIC Conference Championship in Sioux Falls, South Dakota later today. Guys, we hope the best of luck for them, and back to you. Yeah, we'll see what she can do in the pool, Jake. Thank you. Thank you very much. 35 years ago, Campus News debuted on Prairie Public Television. To celebrate this milestone, we are taking a look back at some of the stories from our past. We begin with a glimpse of how Campus News used to begin along with a story about the economic impact of the universities. This is Campus News, reporting the top news stories of colleges and universities in the area and throughout the world. Every year, thousands flock to the Fargo-Moorhead area to get an education. What these students contribute economically to Fargo-Moorhead's survival is astounding. Kevin, reporter Kevin Rolliven and photographer Dave Penning have filed this report. City and school officials say it's unique. Three large institutions, over 18,000 students, 
in a metropolitan area with a combined population of only 110,000 people. Unique? Maybe. But perhaps vital is a better word. A recent tri-college study reports students attending colleges in Fargo-Moorhead contribute more than $336 million annually to the area's economy. The financial stability of Fargo-Moorhead is shown in its expansion and growth, most notably in Fargo. City leaders and college officials realize one thing. North Dakota State University, Moorhead State University, and Concordia College are the lifeline for these cities' survival. Well, I think you'd have to say the impact is akin to dynamite. You know, it really is a powerful impact. Education is really the heart of our economy next to agriculture. Agriculture, of course, is the major foundation of our economy in this part of the country, but here locally in Moorhead and Fargo, and particularly in Moorhead, education is really the heart of our local economy. They become uh, an important part of, uh, of the community. If you deal with Moorhead State and its 650-700 employees, uh, you'd be doing away not only with the, with the college and its employees, you'd be doing away with a number of businesses that uh, that survive because of those those families that uh, that spend their money here. So we have a great a great impact. And with all this talk of millions of dollars, we should perhaps be reminded of one small paradox. It concerns the birth of North Dakota State University back in 1880. Many in the state didn't want the institution. Instead, they wanted a state penitentiary or a hospital for the insane. It was, in fact, one state legislator who said it would be better to abandon any attempt to secure NESU's location so that we could have something of greater benefit. Something, he said, that's big. We will be bringing you more throwback stories from our 35 years in the weeks ahead. And that's it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with another look at the Marine Ecology Lab. Thanks for joining us and have a great week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the School of Communication and Journalism at Minnesota State University, Moorhead, in cooperation with Prairie Public Television.